Ah, the humble potato. An average one will give you a good 15 chips and about as many frames. And this is Rust, nemesis of spuds everywhere and lover of textures and polygons, which it's determined to feed you in a certain amount whether you like it or not, even if you might be too busy dying to appreciate them. I mean, yes, we all want the Rust experience to be as easy on the eye as possible. That goes without saying, but with poor performance being a leading cause of death among survival peasants everywhere, Sacrifices must be made. Wouldn't it be nice, though, to peel back the jacket of the graphical potato further than ever thought possible and concentrate on enjoying the raw, shiny gameplay nugget inside? What would that look like? Maybe it would look like this. So what am I showing you here? Well, sorry to tear you away from writing that clever comment with the words Roblox, Minecraft or Unturned in it somewhere, but believe it or not, this is 100% Rust, and although there are some plugins at work here, the environment itself doesn't require any to exist. I'll explain how it all works in Junus of course, but first, if you're enjoying my content then please leave a like and sub to the channel, I'm aiming for that half a million mark and I'd really appreciate your help in getting there. So to explain, this is a custom map server called Low Poly Rust, you will be able to play on it yourself soon, depending on the queues of course, and it was created by the chaps at Project Nova, whom you may remember from the Mars map I showcased quite a while back now. The aim of this experiment, and it is an experiment at this stage, is to create a PvP playground in Rust with the lowest performance impact possible. The environment's built from simple shapes in a few basic colours, and even weapon and armour skins are provided to match, all of which are only fractions of the file size of normal Rust skins. The map is only 0.6k in size, and whereas a typical Rust map file can be over 55 megabytes, this one's only about 550 kilobytes. Remember kilobytes? <laughs> it's a city map, and here's a nice Captain Bird's eye of it. There are downtown areas, apartments, a residential estate, a construction site, and an industrial area among others, and to help navigate and team up, the area you're in will show in the top left of the screen. So, this project all started fairly recently when a number of cubes were added for map makers to play around with, and it was decided to try remaking some of the Rust monuments with them. When these turned out alright, well... The rest of the story kind of wrote itself. You'll find a number of familiar sites here, including warehouses, oxums, garages, industrial props, pylons, rad barrels, shipping containers, and my favourite, the bus stops. But pretty much everything else has been crafted from scratch, and as far as PvP arenas go, this one provides a lot of options. There's a ton of verticality here, and the simple colours really help too. Anywhere you see a green strip, that's a ladder, a blue strip's a walkway, and there are zip lines all over the shop, which incidentally have been freshly greased and work at twice the speed. There are also some obligatory sewer tunnels to get you around. Now, as I say, it's a PvP map, and to start with will be a free-for-all battlefield with no full damage, where you can just keep respawning and having fun. There are no rules restricting teams at the moment, but as with everything, this is all subject to change, and things will likely be adapted in response to feedback. Just taking a look at features of the server now, and something that should keep things interesting are killstreak rewards. At 3, you get a low poly barricade. Woohoo! At 5, you get to call in an airstrike. Eight bags you a mostly low poly M249. Fifteen gets you a little companion, an actually not low poly turret that lasts for 30 seconds. But the best is when you get to 25, and this ends up in your inventory. Yes, it calls in a nuclear strike that wipes out everyone on the server, including yourself of course. And I love the way the sky looks just after. 
It's so relaxing. There are a lot of respawn points on the map, so you're not constantly getting killed or spawning on top of anyone else. There are also TP requests to other players at the moment. Apart from a default outfit, there are others that can be unlocked by doing various things like being there on day one, for instance, or supporting the server in some way. And there may be an exclusive outfit for top players of the month, etc. Talking of which, you can see your stats at any time and leaderboards, all of which will also be on the server website. You can also customize and save loadouts. But how does performance compare for the average potato? That's what we really want to know. Then fortunately, I can't say it myself as I don't actually own one. Once it gets populated though, it should be possible to monitor and analyze how everybody's spuds are doing. I mean, certainly a comparative build in normal Rust assets would be far more taxing. Just to give you an idea, and this is a very rough calculation of something that's surprisingly hard to gauge a direct comparison for, but it would seem that the vertex count for the entire map could actually be less than the official model for Oxum's gas station. Plus, with the assets used, of course, it doesn't matter what your settings are, everyone should see things virtually the same. No guarantees, of course, but bring your potato along and join in the experiment. If performance is still rubbish after all of this, then either Rust has deeper issues or it's time to sell a kidney. Now, this is a very different looking experience and is the first of its kind in Rust, which is why I wanted to cover it in this video, as I'm always interested in new things being done in the game, but don't get too excited. Obviously, this isn't a full survival experience, as it's only been made possible due to some map making assets and a lot of keyboard grease. It's purely a PvP arena here. That's not to understate the effort that went into making it, but there are limits of what can be done. It would be great to collect some low poly wood and start throwing up a base or finding some loot in these monuments, even jumping on a Lego horse or into a cyber truck and taking it for a spin for instance. And this is where I'd love to say that I hope that one day the full low poly rust experience could be possible somehow. Yes, it would mean making super basic versions of every single asset in the game, and probably a number of not so obvious hoops that would need jumping through, not to mention the risk of upsetting a few artists. But just think about it. You know you want to, Face Punch. So, if you want to try this out for yourself, how do you do it and when? Well, there will be two servers to begin with, one in North America and one in Europe. I'll put the connection details below, also a link to the website and their Discord. And as for when, day one starts on Wednesday, October the 12th at 12pm EST. Thanks to the chaps at Project Nova for letting me play around in advance so I could show you. Oh, and uh, for those of you who remember Legacy, let me know your thoughts on what we've looked at today. Does this interest you? Would you like to see a feature complete low poly version of Rust if that were ever possible? Leave a like and sub to the channel. Follow me on Twitch for streams, Twitter, Facebook, Discord, my Steam group for updates, and you can support me on Patreon with YouTube memberships or via my merch store. All links will be below. I shall catch you all soon. But in the meantime, keep calm and stay rusty. Cheerio. This video is powered by AWDIT's producer range of workstation PCs, available now at awdit.co.uk.